Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. Hallelujah, the realm of existence. There it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4, 21 to 23 says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Hallelujah. That's just that's just plain word of God. Don't need any interpretation. Hallelujah. If you know he is who he says he is. And so this change that it's talking about here, this change about hallelujah, uh, throwing off your old simple nature and your former way of life, hallelujah, and renewing your thoughts and attitudes. This change happens in the spiritual realm. Like I said, I, I hope you don't have them. People haven't thought, Pastor Hicks just making something up and you coming up with something new. No, it, it's always been there. It's always been, hallelujah, a place where we go to change. And, and, and the reason why we can change is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. It takes place in the spiritual world, in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 this series in Psalms 23 that, that I've been doing, it's designed to help us know, help us see how to experience these benefits that are in, hallelujah, this spiritual realm. And as we've gone forth, we've discussed 12 of the 14 uh, um, benefits of the spiritual realm. Now, some of y'all might say, well, Pastor Higgs, why do you keep, 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 keep talking about all of them again every Sunday? Well, you know, I don't know about you, but Every time I talk about it, God gives me something new on each and every one of them. I just don't, I don't give it all, but it's, it's always continuing, continuing to reveal itself to me. And I just can't help but share it with you. And hallelujah. So, and, and, and as we've talked about them, we begin to see the puzzle has come together. I didn't start off with the puzzle. The puzzle pieces begin to come and the puzzle began to come together. The first six represent commitment and our conditioning for a spiritual life. Psalm 23, we heard the, uh, we, we saw the little video when we talked about it, but uh, the first six represents our commitment and conditioning for a spiritual life. We looked at the Lord is my shepherd. That's a commitment that you have to make to make him your Shepherd, we looked at I shall not want. That's a commitment to, to purposely not want the things of this world. Um, we looked at he makes me lie down in green pastures. That's conditioning. That's, 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 that's forcing us to take the rest that we need in this world. Hallelujah. To be successful. We, number four, we looked at he leads me beside still waters. That's also conditioning. He leads me besides a drama-free existence. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know about you, but, but I like living a drama-free existence. That's why the Bible says, let your yay be yay and your nay be yay, because that helps you live a job drama-free existence. You tell somebody yes, you don't really want to do it. You tell them no. You're, I mean, you, now you're all up in some drama. Just let your yay be yay and your nay be nay and then move on. Hallelujah. Six, uh, uh, he leadeth me besides the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's also conditioning. I've learned how to follow Jesus down the right path. I learned how to do it so I can do it on my own. And then uh, um, we saw results in, in 7 through 11. We saw results in 7 through, through, through 11. They, they represent our Christian walk. Hallelujah for um, living with and for the shepherd. A Christian walk living with and for the shepherd. Because when you make him your Lord is my shepherd, now you live with him and for him. You no longer live for yourself. And so the word of God, I mean, the, the, the next one was, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You go all through the word of God when it talks about what can man do to me? Uh, uh, you know, I will not fear. The number one thing that you have to have, 
uh, is no fear because that allows you to have faith. The minute you have fear, you no longer have any faith. So you have to walk through this valley of shadow of death, this world, without fear of evil because that allows faith to come into your life. Uh, uh, the, the, the eighth one was, for you are with me. I, I'm not big and bad all by myself. I, I can do this because God is with me. He's, he's bigger than I am. He's more powerful than I am. And he's right with me. He's right behind me so that I can face this world with no fear because he's with me. So I'm confident that he's with me. Now, now a nine, uh, the ninth one was, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. His word was his rod, his Holy Spirit was his staff. And there are, they, it's there for a comfort uh, uh, for us to allow us to know uh, what's right, what's wrong, and, and that we're doing the right thing uh, um, according to the word of God. It's a comfort to know, uh, to know that. And, and, and they're there to, to, to nudge us. Amen. The tenth one was, he thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Now I begin to get a table prepared to help me deal with and convert my enemies to Jesus. No matter what we're doing, our mission is always unsaved to saved. Unsaved to saved. We're trying to figure out ways to, 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 to convince people to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's it. That's, that, that's what we're living for. Amen. Eleventh uh, was, thou anointest my head with oil. And this is anointing that's meant to have an effect. A effect and act upon it's an official installation and as I, as I thought about this one especially when we were dealing with the men yesterday this one is a rite it's a ritual it happens not when you're born but at a specific time in your life everybody that is born again is not automatically anointed with this kind of installation it happens at a particular point in time in life it's a rite of passage, and, and, and that's why it takes time for this to happen. That's why it didn't happen at the beginning of Psalm uh, 23. It's, it, it's happening toward the end of Psalm 23 because it's something that can't happen right away. You've got to grow to this point. Amen? My son was my son at, at with the minute he was born, but, but we didn't do a rite of passage with him until he turned 13. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, I didn't tell you that before. See, that's what I'm saying. I got to, I, I, the Lord reveals more. 12, my cup runneth over. I'm filled. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in order to bless others. I'm filled. My cup is running over so that I can be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today what we want to do is we want to look at surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's hard to look at any of these without looking at the ones that come before it. They are interconnected. They're not separate. They, they, you know, and so if, if you if you know the progression that we how we've gone, you 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 will understand what we're going to talk about with this one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's King James. New Living Translation says, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And then the Amplified just said, I'm just going to agree with everything and said, surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. So I'm going to go with that one. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. That's the Amplified. Surely, surely, surely. <laughs> That's not somebody's name. That is hallelujah. another way of saying for sure. For sure. It's another way of saying, and we know. And we know. And we know that the next benefit we receive is the constant pursuit of goodness and mercy after us all the days of our lives. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Goodness, let's, 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 let's have an understanding of what that is when it's talking about it in the word of God, because it can mean something different in the world. We're going to talk about that than it means in the word of God. Same thing with mercy it can mean something different in the world than it means in the word of God. Goodness is the good that we do that is a reflection of the God that is in us. 
because of the Holy Spirit. Goodness is the good that we do uh, 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 that is a reflection of the God that is in us because of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Goodness, hallelujah, is produced and hallelujah uh, uh, because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Mercy is now the ability to give someone what they don't deserve. Mercy is now for us, now for the Christian, the ability to give someone what they don't deserve. I'll show it to you later. Uh, um, Matthew 5 and 7 says this, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy is something that God wants us to show to others, us, who? His people. Uh, his children, those of us who are born again. Mercy is something that God wants us to show to his people. Most people want mercy, but never want to give it. Most people want mercy. Oh, 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 come on, give me another chance. But then let you mess up. I'm done with you. Get on away from here. Most people want mercy, but they never want to give it. It was always too hard to, you know, you hurt me too much and you did too much, did it. But, but, but let it be you and you always want another chance. Before we made Jesus our Lord and Savior or, and, and our shepherd, we, we used to chase after goodness and, and we used to plead for mercy in this world. Now in the spiritual, spiritual realm, these attributes of God are now following us. Goodness and mercy are now following us. I want you to, I want you to get that. Goodness and mercy is following you. Everything about Psalms 23 has been about the shepherd introducing us to his goodness and to his mercy. And, and what we had to do is learn how to follow him, uh, the shepherd. We had to learn how to follow Jesus. He said, he, he, he led me beside still water. I had to learn how to be led. He, he, he led us down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We have to learn how to follow him down the path of righteousness and not down our own path. And now we're being given the opportunity to lead because if something is following you, you are leading it. If something is following you, you're leading it. We're getting the opportunity to lead goodness and mercy to others. We are leading goodness and mercy because it's following you. Where you are going, child of God, goodness is mercy is following you. And so you are now leading them uh, to others. You are now leading them to the people who you are supposed to be witnessing to about Jesus. When you get there, goodness and mercy follow you. Why do you need goodness and mercy? Because you need something to, to, to take the place of what you have in you. Because when you get there, you want to talk about, oh, you was going to hell. And you had, no, good, let goodness and mercy catch up. Because it's following you. Is that too? Well, let me not get ahead of myself. Goodness and mercy follows us to help us with our overflowing cup. It helps us with our purpose and our destiny. Everything that you do, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus is supposed to be done with the help of. Goodness and mercy. Somebody's with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, mother. Hallelujah. Good goodness is mercy. And say, hey, what up? Wait, hey, 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 you going over there? Let me go with you. <laughs> hey, 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 come on. I'm going with you. Because I need to check your attitude. I need to check what you say. I need to check how you say it. Both of these are no longer what I am looking to receive. They are what I, 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 I have 
pouring out of me to help other people. We look at that, oh, goodness and mercy should follow me all the day. Like, oh, another thing in my sack. This ain't for you. We go down Psalm 23 and everything in it, we want it for ourselves. And I said, you already blessed. I said, I said before your life and death, blessings and curses. And, and, and so choose life and, 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 and blessings come with, a, oh, let me not get ahead of myself. Blessings come with obedience. You already got my blessing. I'm giving you some stuff so you can help somebody else. Look at 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. It says, but you are not like that for you are chosen people. Remember y'all? Y'all remember this one? I want you to see something. Now that we're in goodness and mercy, I want you to see this. I want you to see this because I didn't see it before. But, but when we got in goodness and mercy, it's like, boom, right there. It says, but you are not like that for you are chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can now show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Verse 10, once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have received no, now you have received God's mercy. Y'all remember Jesus said, freely you have received. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are now blessed. We are now blessed because we can show others God's goodness and give them his mercy. Why? Why? Because goodness and mercy follow only those who will use its power. And goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Why? Because they're going to follow you because they know you will use its power because they know who you serve. Because you started out saying the Lord is Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So let's go back to, let's go back to, let, let's go back to see, and, and, and let's get this understanding of what's following us. What's following us? Goodness, goodness. I remember I said earlier, goodness, I'm going to let you see it this time. Goodness is the good that we do that is a reflection of the God who is in us because of the Holy Spirit. This is important because there are forms of good in this physical world that are not connected to God. You can have a good idea, but it cheats people out of all their money. You can have a good joke, but it's dirty. You can be a good liar. You can be a good thief. But, 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 but these all are good in the physical world, but they are not inspired by God. And so you got to understand, a, a, a good that is not of God is not the goodness that we're talking about. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans 14 and 17 said, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness. Peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Spirit. In the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Living a life of goodness. Ephesians 5, 8 to 10 says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. I'm in the King James. I think that's new living. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. I sound like that, 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 that Romans. Right? Oh, thank you, Jesus. It, it, it is the good that is done that is approved by God. You know, there's some people that are just be like, well, I was just trying to do some good. Yeah, but it's got to be the good that's approved by God. It can't be the good that hurts somebody. It can't be the good that, you know, like that, 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 that the world thinks is good, but God doesn't. So we have to make sure that, 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 that we're living a life of goodness because 
as you deal with people in this world, they're not going to give you that. Because goodness is not following them. Goodness and mercy is following you. And you have the ability to give them goodness, even if they don't have the ability to give it to you. Only thing the world has to give you is what the world thinks is good. And what the world thinks is good is not good in the sight of God. Here, man, let me give you this joint. It's good. No, it ain't. You know, come on, y'all. Let me make you feel better. Let me, let me feel good. Let me give you some of this alcohol. No, nah, that's not good. Not in the sight of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is the good that is done that is approved by God. How do you know it's approved by God? Because you fellowship with him. Because he's with you always. Because you're filling yourself with the, his spirit. When you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, you're filling yourself up with God. I hope y'all know that. When we're talking about being filled with the spirit, we're talking about filling yourself up with God. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The more of him that's in you, the more you know what is uh, 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 the good that he approves of and the good that is attached to the world. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Thank you, Lord. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Mercy is the ability to give someone what they don't deserve. I'm going to slow down on this. Because this one gets stuck in your throat. Mercy. Because I said before, remember, mercy is something that we want, but it's not something that we want to give. All day long, we want what we don't deserve. All day long, we seek what we don't deserve from God. But let somebody, let somebody step on your shoe. And it's an unforgivable sin. You know what much these calls? Where to shoot somebody. Let somebody roll their car on your grass. Grass which grows without you. <laughs> and grass that will grow back. You ready to fight? No mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was full of mercy. Giving people stuff that they didn't believe or didn't deserve because they didn't believe. They didn't know him. They didn't even know him to believe in him. But he did things for people because they didn't deserve it. I mean, that, I mean he, he came back the reason we, none of us deserved him. Look at Matthew 20, verses 29 and 34. Where, where God says, and Jesus, as Jesus and his disciples left town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming, they said, they began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. They said, give us something that we don't deserve. Know what you're saying when you say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, give me something that I know I don't deserve. But I'm asking for it anyway. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Come give us something we don't deserve. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called out, what do you want me to do for you? Mercy requires a response. And mercy requires a question. You can't just say, Lord, have mercy on me. You got to say, because well, the Lord said, well, what do you want? What are you asking for that you don't deserve?
I mean, because 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 they could have just said this at the beginning. They said he said he said what do you want me to do? They said he said they said we we want to see. Now they could have just screamed, "Lord, heal our eyes! Here I heal our eyes!" But they knew they needed mercy. But the Bible says this. Now, there are times in the word of God where Jesus will say, because of your faith, you are healed. Right? They ain't have no faith. They're asking for mercy. Ain't no faith. faith. Ain't no faith behind mercy. The request for mercy had nothing to do with faith. Because if you was living in faith, you wouldn't need mercy. Word of God, knowledge, using the plot of my life. If I'm living by faith, I don't need mercy. The word of God says, Jesus felt sorry for them. There's some people that you're going to have to deal with. They are not saved, but they need mercy. It's going it's to, it, it, it should affect your, your have an emotional response, come from an emotional response of feeling sorry for someone and you're going to show them mercy. You're not going to give them what they deserve. Bible says Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly they could see. Then they followed him. They followed Jesus as a, as a result of the mercy that he showed them. They're wanting to be a part, wanting to know Jesus, wanting to follow him was a result of receiving mercy, uh, 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 receiving something that they, they didn't deserve. And now goodness and mercy is following you. The ability to give people what they don't deserve, why? So they can be drawn to Jesus. Goodness and mercy is not following you say, oh man, I gotta be, I be good to somebody, man, I need. Who is your example? Who are you following? Because of who are you following, goodness and mercy is following you. Mercy needs you to know what to do. Mercy is, Jesus was not only full of mercy, mercy is expected by Jesus. You cannot be a Christian and not be merciful to others. One, because goodness and mercy is following you, so you have no excuse. And two is, it's expected of you. It's not a suggestion. Matthew 9, 12 to 14 says, when Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. See, so you can do more with people who who who, who want to walk around like I got a relationship with God. And, you know, I know Jesus with me, me and him like this. You know, we got our own thing. You can do more with people that just say I'm I ain't right. I know I ain't right, and I'm trying to. I'm you know, and I you know, and and they might be saying I'm trying to get myself better before I come to church, but I oh I'm not ready or whatever. You can do more with them. Then you can with somebody thinking they somewhere where they're not. Because you can show them mercy. A sick person needs a doctor. A sinner needs mercy because a sinner can't be blessed. Oh, Lord, bless my son. No, Lord, I, I, I show mercy to my son. Because blessings follow obedience. Sinners need to experience the mercy that comes from God through us. 
why, that's why, that's why the Bible t- tells us how to respond to loving your neighbor and loving your enemy. Why? Because it, the, the only difference that they're ever going to receive, because they're in the world. And they're already dealing with people in the world. Sinners hang with sinners. And so they should see a difference coming from you to them. Look at Luke 10, 34 to 37. The word of God says this, go over to him, going over to them, going over to him. The Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Here's Jesus. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. The man who showed the mercy is the one Jesus said we should emulate. Giving someone something they didn't earn or didn't deserve because you felt sorry for as a way to let them see the God in you, as a way to lead them to Jesus, as a way to lift Jesus up high. He said, if I be lifted up, I'm not doing it so I'm big and bad. I'm doing it so that they know, look, the only reason is because goodness and mercy, they following me. That's the only reason I had the power to, to be merciful to you. Ooh, do the same. Do the same. Do the same. Show mercy. Hallelujah. Without trying to get anything back. Loving your neighbor requires you to show mercy. Mercy is an act of love. You know, when, when, I, when I start thinking about that, it's, it's you know, you know in, the, in the Amplify, it was like, you know, goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow you all the days of your life. And they just, you know, and in the New Living, it just took mercy out and put unfailing love. And so they, 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 mercy is unfailing love. Mercy is showing love. We don't want to see it that way because, we, you know, the world doesn't see it that way. Why? Because the world can't love. The world can't love. Mercy is unfailing God kind of love, not world kind of love. Mercy is love. Look at John, 2 John 1 and 3. I'm going to do some crossing out so you can see what I'm talking about. First, I'm going to read the whole thing. Grace, mercy, and peace, which comes from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, will continue to be with us who live in truth and love, right? Y'all see that? So it says grace and mercy and peace, which come from the Father, from, from God the Father, I'm gonna take out which comes from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because all that's saying is where this stuff is coming from, right? So it goes grace, mercy, and peace will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. Y'all see that? Grace, mercy, and peace will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. I'm going to take out grace and I'm going to take out peace. Mercy will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. I'm going to take out truth. Mercy will continue to be with us who live in love. Got to dig it out, but it's there. And the rest of it is there too. Mercy, truth, grace, mercy, all of that. But mercy will continue to be with us who live in love. If you live in love, you have mercy. If you want mercy, you got to have love. 
You cannot, you cannot have mercy on your neighbor without loving your neighbor. You can't have mercy on yourself without loving yourself. Some of us need to give ourselves, hallelujah, a break. You're too hard on yourself. You're too hard on the situation. You need to show some mercy to yourself. Give yourself something that you don't think it deserves. A pat on the back. A break. Encouragement. What does David do? Encouraged himself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage yourself. Sometimes we are too hard on ourselves. We don't give ourselves mercy. That's why we, that's why we don't have it for other people. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. For the Christian, it is easier to understand goodness and mercy by looking at it this way. It's easier to understand goodness and mercy by knowing that the opposite of good, the goodness of God, the opposite of the goodness that comes from God is doing what feels good to you. The opposite of the goodness that God wants you to have is the good that makes you feel good. Anytime you want, oh, I want, I'm going to make myself feel good. Oh, it's, I want to feel good. That's, that's not coming from God. The opposite of mercy is revenge. Wanting to give someone what they deserve. And we all understand them. We all understand those opposites. If we don't understand the goodness uh, of God and we don't understand mercy, we sure understand the opposites. Because that's all the world wants us to do. D does it make you feel good? Then go ahead and do it. So that's what the world, that's what the world is all about. Making yourself feel good. Look at Romans uh, 12 and 19. Now we can understand this one uh, a little bit better. We talked about it a couple of uh, couples um, weeks ago, but now it says, dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to, 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 to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. What is he saying? Don't take revenge. Give them mercy. How can I do that, God? Because goodness and mercy is following you. Just wait up. I want, I, I want some revenge. Mercy said, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Because it's following you. And then in verse 20, it says, instead... If your enemies are hungry, feed them. Goodness, say, here, I'm here, I'm here. Mercy stops you. Now, goodness, say, let me do my part. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their head. That's because goodness and mercy caught up with you. You leading them everywhere you're going and everywhere you're going, you got the opportunity to give mercy. You got the opportunity to give goodness. Why? Because of who you serve. It's not available to everybody. Stop looking for people in the world to give goodness and mercy to you. They're not, they not going to do it because they can't do it because there's nowhere around them. It, ain't, it, ain't even, it don't even see them. Goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life because of who you are and who you serve. You're the only ones that have the ability to not take revenge in that way. I want you to see something else. And, 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 and this one got me because I was like, wow. This is also the power that we have looked for when people, Christians say, well, I, I, I forgive, but I can't forget. Well, yeah, if you're still thinking like the world, you can't. But goodness and mercy is following you. 
Just, 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 just hold on. Let it catch up to you. Goodness and mercy is following you. Goodness and mercy will allow you to give forgiveness the help it needs to heal. Mercy is like, go ahead, go ahead, forgive them. Go ahead, go ahead. I know they don't, they, they don't deserve to be back in your presence. They don't deserve, but show them some mercy. Give them what they don't deserve. Jesus gave you what you didn't deserve. You took that freely. God's people are the only ones who can give others what they don't deserve. God's people are the only ones who can love their neighbors the same as they can love their enemies. Why? Because we have the power to do so. Why? Because it's the example that was set for us. Jesus said, I would never tell you to do something that, 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 that I wouldn't do myself. And as he, as, as, he, as he hung there on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Father, show them mercy. Father, don't blow them up. I, I, you, 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 you can blow them up with a, with a snap of your finger, but don't do it, Lord. Your goodness is too great. That's who we're supposed to be. See, that's that, 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 that makes us stand out more when we talk about your chosen people, royal priesthood, God's very own possession. Well, you got to look better than what's out there. You got to look better than what's out there. Things that you possess should look better than things that are laying in the gutter. Things that you cherish should look better than things people threw away. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have been listening to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. We pray that this word takes root in your life.